In the previous update, the structural steel base had been made and also a tower section. Also constructed was the slewing unit and the upper slewing ring support A-frame. Since then, central axle guides have been added top and bottom. And that's just a temporary check to make sure that the slewing unit is properly centered. There are also now parallel drives to each side of the slewing unit. As the slewing unit has to deal with the whole weight of the crane, it remains to be seen if it's up to the job. Some small details have been added to the A-frame support lugs. And the open sides of the slewing unit have also been filled in. To make access easier for maintenance and sorting out problems, some of the outer strips are just lock nutted on, and that will make them easier to remove if necessary. It just means that you don't have to get inside to remove a nut or a bolt in order to get the side panels off. Another necessary detail has been added to four corners of the slewing unit, and that's attachment points for the cab support platform unit. And that's the next part that we're going to build. But firstly we'll put together the parts that we have and firstly we'll lower the slewing unit on top of the tower section. They are held together by screwed rods and there are two in each corner and fitting them all depends on good alignment between the tower and slewing unit sections. Fortunately the design ensures the alignment is pretty good so the rods go through easily and then we can tension them up by tightening the nuts. Details to add include cover boxes for the screwed rods on the slewing unit. Let's do a quick strength test, and yay, the tower doesn't drop off. Next, the giant hand crane can lift in the A-frame, and there are securing bolts to insert at each corner. Again, the alignment is good, but even on the real crane, sometimes these bolts have to get hammered home. So here we have all of the locking bars inserted, and just to make sure they stay that way, we'll put collars on the ends. These are standard Meccano parts and they're locked in place by using a screwdriver on a small grub screw. Next we're going to make a start on the cab support platform unit. That carries the cab and also electrical cabinets and it all sits on a grey steelwork frame. That frame is attached to two long support beams and those beams fit to brackets we saw before on the slewing unit. Here's a picture of the underside of the support deck, and we can use that to scale the dimensions for the scale model. So to begin with, we made the support beams for the deck, and they're fixed to the lugs on the slewing unit. Here's the first attempt for the structural deck of the cab support unit, and the cab goes at the square on the right, and electrical cabinets towards the rear. There are downstand supports to keep the frame off of the ground, and you can also see attachment points where this frame will clip onto the beams that we saw before. Here's the big electrical cabinet, and there aren't many details of the real cabinet, so we've had to guess some of the arrangements. And on the inside we've put a couple of large opening doors. Again, this is a bit of a guess, because I've got no good photos of how the real unit is configured. Using the support feet at the bottom, you can drop it into place on the frame and then use securing bolts to lock it into position. Once that's done, the cabinets are fitted to the frame, and you can see that this is actually quite a large piece of work. Next we move on to something that's quite complicated from a Meccano point of view, and that is the cab. It's full of different curves and angles, and that's usually not so easy to model in the Meccano system. There are also shaped glass windows, which were another challenge. Anyway, enough complaining, here is the cab made up in Meccano. And to begin with, the overall shape looks pretty good. There's glass at the front, but not in the sides. And at the back, we've got a door. As a bit of improvisation, we put feet at the bottom so that the cab stands level. And there are also downstand support bolts for fitting to the frame. The black shape should be a triangle with a sharp angle at the bottom, so that bit still needs to be made accurate. And one way to do it would be to cut the plastic plate to suit. There's also no transparent plates in the sides because of the awkward shapes. Up on top there are protection grills on the roof, and these have been made out of narrow strips with quarter inch holes. 
We saw the door before and it does open, it's hinged. And we've also put a black floor inside the cab. One other detail is the operator's seat and here we've made it out of Meccano. And again there's a little bit of guesswork involved. Joysticks have been modelled and they sit on beefy side boxes. Of course it looks wickedly uncomfortable so we'll soften it up a bit with some padding. And just to give it a luxurious look we'll cover it in some nice cloth. Of course we're now venturing outside the Meccano system to provide upholstery. But there's nothing wrong with providing simple additions like this for realism. Taking a look at the seat inside the cab, it does fully rotate, so you can sit down and then rotate into the operating position. We've also added a small video screen. So the cab is a separate part and it's been built so that it fits on two lugs on the support deck. The long bolts fit into the holes and then nuts can be added to tighten them up. So here we have the cab support deck, but it's far from complete. There's lots of detail to add, including handrails and also mesh walkway floors. Let's turn it around and take a look from the other side. And again, there's a little bit of guesswork as to how it really looks. But the real cab certainly has a door and you'd imagine that the cabinets must have doors too. This is another heavy component that's been made, so let's put it on the waybridge. And the platform unit in its current build weighs in at £6.8 ounces, or if you prefer, nearly 3 kilograms. So once again the giant hand cranes need to do some heavy lifting, and put the cab support platform unit into position. It drops down onto the support beams, and when the connection lugs are lined up, it can be bolted into position. And from this position, you can also see there's a grill at the front of the cab to allow the operator to look down. So that completes this update of the model. And now you can begin to appreciate what a fool I've been to make this model in such a large scale. Mm -hmm.